Hello world and welcome to another episode of Bar. In today's video I want to show you how to use Dynamo Streams with Algolia. I promise you in the Dynamo Streams that I will show you an example on how to use them and how powerful they can be and this is my promise being fulfilled. If you want to watch more content about serverless, cloud or software engineering in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> By now, maybe you have already watched some of my videos about Dynamo and if you have not, I'll leave you the link to the playlist on the top. In there I go from the basics, what is NoSQL database and how to do operations, basic operations in Dynamo and how to auto scale and so many other things. And also I talk about Dynamo streams, that is one of my favorite features of Dynamo. When I talk about Dynamo streams, I made a very, 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 very simple use case and in this video I want to redeem myself to make a little bit more interesting use case and for that I will be using Algolia and DynamoDB Streams. So what is Algolia? Algolia is a search service, so it's not AWS, it's just another service that is online, backend as a service, that you can connect with your with their APIs and do different kinds of things. They provide SDKs, for different types of um, usage. So you can use it in your backend or in your frontend. And we will be using the backend APIs for searching in their platform. So basically what they do is you send them information and then they will create indexes and then you can do some kind of free form search in there. And what I like from this service is that it's very easy to search. When you are looking at a non-SQL database, usually search is one of the most tricky parts because they are not designed to be searched on. So searching is a very expensive task and more with Dynamo. Unless you have the ID, then everything else is kind of expensive. You need to create index, you need to really plan ahead. But when you combine Dynamo and Algolia, then you get quite a powerful match. So in this case, I will create an example of a person's table where I will put personal information of different persons, like name and surname and country and phone and email and whatever. And then I will use Dynamo Streams to stream that information to Algolia. I won't stream all the information because there is some things that I might not want to search. For example, I might not be interested in searching by phone. I might be interested to search of all the persons that are from Uruguay, like me, or all the persons that are called Marcia, like me. But I might not be interested in searching all the persons that have the same phone number. So I will just decide on which parameters I want to index in Algolia. And also I will send the person ID to Algolia. So then when the search comes, I will be able to have a person ID for all the different hits. So then I will have a very fast search using Dynamo. So that's what we are going to do. Getting started with Algolia is very easy. I already have set up my accounts. I will leave you the link for Algolia in the description box. If you're a developer, you can create a free Algolia account to try it out. You can get the APIs working and do all kinds of things. You might not have a massive amount of things, uh, space to store at your index, but you don't care. It's just for playing around. And that's the idea that if you're a developer, you can access their platform. So go ahead, create your Algolia account. And now let's go to the code and see how we can get this done. So let's start first defining what we are going to create. We are going to create a new serverless framework project with some functions. This project will have a table of persons where we are going to store some personal information like the name, the country where the person is from, the age, email, phone, and other personal information. We are going to have Dynamo Streams enabled in this table. So when we store a person in the table, we'll have a Lambda that will be triggered by the a new record appearing in the stream. And this Lambda will grab the register, the new image of that register, and it will take some information out from it and send it to Algolia to be indexed. So then we can search on that. Then we will have another Lambda that is triggered by API Gateway. 
given a search term, it returns the persons that have been found with that, with that criteria. So you can pass, for example, Finland, and it will return all the persons that have Finland in their country. Or you can ask for a name, and it will return all the persons that have that name. So let's go to the code, and in the code, the first thing we are going to do, as always, is to create a new project. I will call it Serverless Dynamo Algolia. You can call it whatever, it's just an AWS Node.js project, as always, and, and also we initialize the Node project for this project as well, because we will have some dependencies that we need to manage. And when we have everything ready, then we can go to Atom and start working on it. I will just remove all the comments in this file to make it more easy to read. I won't go into the details of creating a Dynamo table. You can see the card that I will leave you here, and I will not go into the details of the streams. I will leave you another card on how to do streams. Also, I won't go into the details on the environmental variables. I will also leave you a link to the video. If you cannot find them in the cards, you can always find them in the description box below. So, the first thing we are doing is creating a new table, and I will put a name that is an environmental variable. Just as a good practice, I always like to do that. So this table, it's a DynamoDB table, and it has a name, and it has a person ID. And I just define the permissions for that table, and that's it. Then I will go and modify the hello function that comes by default in the serverless YAML, and I will just create an API gateway. So I will have now, instead of hello, I will have save person function that will have one API gateway event that will go to save a person. So whenever we go to that path and that method, we save a person. So I will just use the database manager. You can see how to save stuff in Dynamo in this other video that I have made about basic operations with Dynamo. So I won't go into the details of that. So basically this database manager will just save this person. It's basically grabbing the body and then creating a unique ID for that person and then saving that person object into the database, into the table, and then returning the ID. I have this helper method, create response, that what it does, it just creates an HTTP request response giving a status code and a message, so I don't need to repeat myself because we will have a couple of these methods. So the create response will help me to just do that. And now I can deploy, I will speed it up. And then we can try the endpoint in Postman that we get. We just put in the body some person with the name, write proper JSON, and then we can pass some parameters for this person, like the name, the surname, the country, phone number, whatever you want, you can pass here. And then you should send and you will get an ID back for that person. Now we have our save in place. Our database has the streams enabled. And the next thing we need to do is to go to Algolia and get set up. So you need to create your account. And after you create the account, you can either go to the API reference to, for example, JavaScript, that is what we are going to use, and then follow the instructions. So the first thing we need to do is to require this library. So we need to import a dependency, as always, to our node project. And after we save that dependency, we can check in the packet JSON and we will see that Algolia is there. Next thing we are going to do is to configure the application ID and the application key and the index that we created in Algolia. For doing that, I'm going to use environmental variables, so these are not all around the code. And for the sensitive information, I'm going to use the parameter store that I have talked in the previous video. So if you don't know how to configure the parameter store, you can check this other video that I leave you in the card and in the description. For the index, I will just put the index name as an environmental variable because that's no secret and it can be in the code with no problem. But the ap application ID and the application key, I want to keep as a secret. I will use the parameter store. I will put that in my parameter store and then I can call it from the from the serverless YAML. And 
I can do the same for both the application ID and the application key. Don't forget to put the dollar sign symbol there because it will fail. That's important. And after you have set up the client and the index, then you can create a new function that is called add a person. And that will basically call the index dot add object. And we can pass that person into the index. So it's very, very simple. The only thing I want to do first is to prepare that person for Algolia. So because we are getting from the Dynamo stream, we are getting a very weird object. So I just cleaning up a little bit that object and just getting the two parameters that I'm interested in. That is the name and the country that those are the ones I want to search over and also the person ID. So then I can reference the person ID from Algolia to Dynamo. But for example, I will not be able to search from phone. I can show you the method in the documentation. You can put more parameters if you want. There is quite a lot of customization. So go ahead and check it out. Now we have created the method that adds a person to the index. So now we need to create a new function that gets triggered whenever there is a new record in the stream. So I will create this update Algolia index that will get triggered when there is a new record in the person's table stream. And I will just add that to our handler JS. It's a very simple thing. It just grabs the person from the new image and then it calls the Algolia manager add person with that person and it returns null null because nobody's watching for that response. So this is pretty straightforward. And now we can deploy. Then we get this URL and we can add a new element to the to the table and we can just we can see in the index now that we have one record and now the next thing we want to do is to create a new function that will allow us to search in that index given a search query so we just create a new function that is triggered by api gateway that is called search algolia index and it's a very simple function that is using the search and you can see also in the API reference how to use it, but it's pretty straightforward. It just has some query and a string, for example. That's how we are going to use it. So in the Algolia Manager, I can just add that new search person and it's just super simple as calling index search. And then I can return that in the response. And then I deploy and we can try it out. So I will speed this deployment again. And now we get two URLs. We get a get and a post and we can try that get in postman. And we can see that there is one thing is returned now if I query for Marcia. And then if I query for Uruguay and get one hit, it is the same. So now I can add a new record. I will call it Aralia. Perez, also from Uruguay. And now if I do again the query for Uruguay, I will get I will get two records, Analia and Marcia. And I get the person ID, the country and the name. And if I search for Marcia, I will only get one record. If I search for Analia, I get one record. And if I go to the Algolia index, then I will see that I have two different records there. This is pretty simple way to create a free text kind of search with almost no effort and using the Dynamo streams. The code is available in GitHub as always for you to check. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you would like to see more examples like this using different AWS services and other services, leave them in the comment box below. I'm interested to know what kind of services you are using and which kind of services you would like me to integrate the serverless technologies to. So I think this is one service that I like a lot. So I thought, well, why not? Let's make a video like this. But I'm open to try new other services, so just leave them in the comments box below. If you have any questions or whatever, just ask them. And the code is also available in the description box, so you can go and check it out. And around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch, so go ahead and click. And I see you in the next episode of Wubar. Ciao!